All right, guys, we are going to take a dive into pricing properties. I've had a lot of realtors reach out because all throughout the U.S. and in Canada, we've seen a market shift. So no matter what type of market you're in, this proven formula that I'm going to give you is going to allow you to price a property correctly in any market. As the market shifts, it becomes a little bit more difficult to price properties. So I'm going to give you my proven formula that you can use in any type of market to price properties. I'm going to take you step by step through it. So let's get after it. All right. The first thing is we're going to pull up our MLS. So whatever MLS you're in, Go ahead and get logged into it. And I'm gonna just walk you through it here. So we're gonna pull up our MLS. The first thing we're gonna do is pull up our subject property. So I'm actually pulling numbers together for a client of mine. Um, they've been in their house for a little bit of time and they're feeling like they want to move. So I'm gonna pull up that subject property first. I'm gonna open another window and I'm gonna use that to find my comps all right so open up two windows start off with your subject property i know here we can only have one active window so this will be my stationary one um number one is proximity is key you don't want to veer too far off of the trodden path okay um because the further you go out the more adjustments you have to make right if you find comps that are in the same subdivision of the subject property then you don't have to make adjustments for proximity to the interstate let's say so let's say you found a comp that was a mile out um, but it's right by the highway and this particular area is not by the highway you know you have to go through a ton of lights there could be an adjustment for that or let's say um, a mile out there's a lake view and this property doesn't have it so there would be an adjustment for that so make sure number one the first step in this process is proximity so you in a perfect world if you can find a house in the same subdivision that's ideal okay and you don't have to make additional adjustments for it if you have to if the market is really slow and you're not seeing a ton of activity and you have to stretch that radio proximity out to one mile for a suburban area, you can do that. So one mile is your absolute max, but you would prefer to stay within a quarter of a mile of the subject property, all right? So let's pull up our subject property here. Let's copy that. Let's put it into our proximity search within the MLS. So I'm gonna copy and paste it here, find it, and I'm gonna keep it within a quarter of a mile. That's where I'm gonna start. I want to look at the closed properties, but as you find yourself in a shifted market, closed is not gonna be the only things that you're gonna look at, right? In a shifted market, we're seeing changes happen pretty frequently. So we wanna look at these properties that have gone, gone under contract. So I wanna look at active contingent, I want to look at active kicko. I want to look at active option. So anything that has gone under contract, I want to see those that are close to the subject property. I also want to see the coming soons and the actives because that's going to tell me my competition, right? So if there's a ton of properties for sale within a quarter of a mile that are similar to the subject property, I know I'm going to have to price it lower than I would if there were no other properties for sale right because incre increase in inventory lowers the demand because buyers have more to choose from right and that lower demand means lower price okay so i want to look at clothes and i want to keep it like as low as possible i would love to look at 30 days so if there's some data within the last 30 days that's where i want to be i also want to see the pending um, so anything that's gone under contract and now has transitioned into pending, I want to see that information as well. So that's step number one is getting your comps that are within a quarter of a mile of the subject property. Step number two is we want to find like properties. So in a perfect world, if you could find the exact same house, 
same floor plan, same square footage, same number of bedrooms, same number of bathrooms to your subject property within a quarter of a mile radius. So it's in that same subdivision and you and that closed within 90 days. Those numbers are going to be pretty accurate as to what you can expect a willing and able buyer to pay for your property, right? So that's what we're looking for. We're looking for the most similar recent comp that a buyer paid for that's close to the subject property. So here's how we define most similar, right? Number one is the square footage. So I want to stay within 25% of the subject property square footage. So if I go into my MLS, I pull up the square footage, it's 3696 square feet. Okay. So I'm going to get my calculator out. I'm going to type in 3696. I'm going to multiply that by 25%. So 25% of 3696 is 924. That is gonna be my square footage differential. So I'm gonna take 924, I'm gonna add it to 3696, and that gives me 4620. So when I go to my square footage to find my comps, my upper range is gonna be 4620. So I don't want any houses bigger than that, okay? My lower range is gonna be 3696 minus 924. So 2772 is gonna be my lower range. So I don't wanna see houses smaller than that. Now, the closer to the 3696 square footage, the better. So if I could get a house that was 3600 square feet or exactly 3696, that's the one I wanna hone in on because it's most similar to my subject property, okay? So that's our square footage range. So that's our second step in this process. Our third step is the age of the property, okay? So we are going to take the age. So this house was built in 2022, it's a new construction. They bought the property and closed in January. So, um, I've been in the house since January. They're feeling like they want to downsize. So they reached out to me to figure out, does it make sense for them to do that? So this is the process that I go through. Um, so new construction, the house is now almost a year old. Um, it's been lived in. So I really don't want to compare it to a property that's brand new. However, I don't want to have a house that's too old, right, as a comparison. So I wouldn't want to do a five year. So the range that you're going to want to do, you're going to want to take the age of your subject property. So technically mine is almost one year old, and then you're going to multiply it by 0.33. So that's going to give you your differential for the age. So let's say you had a five year old property and you multiply that by 0.33. Your age differential is going to be around two years. So you wouldn't want anything. If it were five years old, that would put the year built at um, 2017, right? So I wouldn't want anything, if, if my differential was two years, I wouldn't want anything older than 2015 and I wouldn't want anything newer than 2019. So that would be my range. For mine, since my property is pretty much new, um, I'm going to do, I'm just going to do 2022, sorry, 2020 or newer and see what comes up here. So there's a good amount of matches. So that's good um, because I want to have data. Data is going to help me. Now, there's a lot of actives. So when I'm looking at pricing a property and there's a ton of other buyer opportunities, I know that my pricing has to be lower than it would be if there was nothing else, right? So this tells me there's a lot of opportunity here, which isn't the best thing and it's new construction. So one pro with having a property that's already completed is it's done, it's ready. You can move in right away. You don't have to wait to go through the build process, right? Um, so that's one pro that I would discuss with the sellers, but a lot of the comparables 
look like they have to be constructed um, or some of them are ready, okay? So I'm looking at that. I'm looking at when I put in that year built in there, that's giving me just one sale. So this one here is going to be one that I'm gonna use in terms of pricing. So this property is in the same subdivision of the subject. It's similar in size, although it's smaller, okay? It's similar in bedrooms and bathrooms. So mine has four bedroom, four full um, bathrooms, and then, sorry, five bedrooms, four full bathrooms. The subject property has four bedrooms, three baths. Um, I'm also going to look at the square footage of the, the lot. So I want to know how big my lot is. Okay. So step one to find these most recent similar sales, that's what you're looking at doing guys. Um, you're going to put in that proximity. So the max that you want to do in a suburban area is going to be one mile. If you are running comps, um, for an urban area like a condo um, downtown, you want to stay within that half a mile radius. You really want to stay within that same building. Okay. If you're looking at a rural property, <laughs> all bets are off, right? You have to go out as far as you need to go out to find your most recent similar sale. Your property could be on 10 acres, right? So you may have to go out <clears throat> far to find something similar to it. So proximity is number one. Number two, square footage. So 25% differential plus or minus of the subject property square footage. Number three is the age of the su subject property. You want to do 33% of the subject property's age. Now I mentioned that's going to give you your comps. There's other things that are going to factor in, in terms of pricing. That is how much availability is there so are there other properties for sale that are similar if there are there's going to be an adjustment to your price compared to if there were nothing else out there right so i'm going to have to price a little bit lower that's called pricing ahead of the market um i'm going to look at two other things in terms of my pricing number one is how big is the lot so this lot on the comparable, it's almost a half an acre. Um, my subject property is a half an acre. So you can pretty much figure that if you stay within close proximity, you're in that same subdivision, most of the properties are gonna be around the same square footage, right? So we don't have to make any adjustment for that. The last thing that you wanna consider is the condition of the property, right? So mine is not brand new anymore, like it appears in this picture. So when I'm talking to my sellers, I'm gonna ask them about the condition of the property before I go out and look at it, right? So has there been any issues with it since they've been there? Are there any current repairs that are needed? So I'm gonna make adjustments for those, the condition, if there's any difference in them. That's your step-by-step -step process, guys. I hope this helps you dial in and really figure out how to price properties um, in any given market. Click the link below um, if you want to set up a time to go over this or if you have more questions, you can get on my calendar. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up, like it. Um, if you want to hear more about pricing properties, getting listings, getting seller leads. Um, that's my specialty. Subscribe. All right, guys, take care.